Good morning. Let us begin this fall 2019 commencement with prayer. Please remain standing and, and move your hats as appropriate. Oh God, this is a day that you have given to us as a gift. May we unwrap it, embrace it, and live it to the fullest. Help each of us to recognize your grace in this and in every aspect of our lives. And may we rejoice and celebrate this glorious occasion in an appropriate manner. We give you thanks for bringing us together for this event and pray that it may be memorable as we acknowledge the collective accomplishments of this graduating class. In your blessed name we pray, amen. You may be seated. Good morning and welcome to this wonderful day for you graduates. My name is Paul Bauer. I'm the vice chairman of the board of trustees. Dr. Dan Crocker could not be with us this morning, so I'm standing in for him and I promise I'll do the best I can. With that being said, with all veterans in active service, please stand. We would like to thank you for your service to our country. Would everyone else please stand as the Army ROTC presents the colors and a 2006 alumni by the name of Letitia Scott sings our national anthem.
entertainment weekly, real simple, essence, people in espanol, sports illustrated for kids, time for kids, and teen people. Deft at successfully navigating the complexity of multinational businesses, Ms. Williams' other positions have included director of HR for American Express, where she managed global HR responsibilities for several of its high growth units. Earlier in her career, she successfully ed executed HR manager assignments with increasing impact at Pepsi, Nabisco, and Nelson Media. A double Ivy, Ms. Williams holds a Master of Arts in Organizational Psychology from Columbia University and a Bachelor of Science in Industrial and Labor Relations from Cornell University. She resides in New York City and is a board member of Hunter College High School AA. Please give a warm Wesleyan welcome to Miss Constance Williams. Good morning. Oh, that was nice. Let's do that again. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, President Duff, uh, Duff, for that very kind introduction, which I'm extremely humbled by. What a privilege it is to be here and to share this very special occasion with all of you. Thank you, NC Wesleyan faculty, staff, honored guests, family, friends, and the SGA president, Tommy Clark, for giving me such a warm welcome. Most especially, I want to thank the graduating class of 2019 for being impressive, for earning your college degree. It is a wonderful credential, and I trust it's the first of Menti. Do that. So bravo, we are celebrating you. So, ooh, what a very nice view from here. Look at you. What I'm seeing is a sea of beautiful colors. So, is everybody awake this morning? Y'all awake? Good. Because when I tell you nothing, nothing wakes you up like a splash of dirty water on your face. Like a splash of dirty toilet water to your face. Yes, indeed. Toilet water hitting my face did not deter me. But let me tell you what it did. It woke me up to my drive for more in this life. It helped me fight for my life, Southpaw style. You see, I was 14 years old and I was working hard for my mother's residential cleaning business after school and on weekends and I was still driven that hasn't changed I'm still driven to work hard and to put the time in what's driving me today in this moment right now is you I came here today to motivate you I came here to educate and inspire and engage you. So I want you to know that when you are hit with your own toilet water, you have two choices. You can either cower in disgust and defeat, or you can wipe and work. You can let it dampen your life, or you can choose to wipe your face and let that be the thing that fuels you to keep going and, and create the opportunity for yourself to tell your own whole story. So in the words of Jonathan McReynolds, who many call the next generation of gospel, what I've come to tell you is simply this. May your whole life prove that God is good. 
So in other words, the entirety of my life has proven how good God is. So in March of this year, I had the honor of attending the Stellar Awards in Vegas. And for those of you who may not be familiar, it's the Grammys of the gospel genre. Jonathan performed this song. The name of the song is God is Good. And the lyrics, y'all, it emotionally slayed me. I mean, like a fish, it just filleted me, just cut me up. Why? Because those words are the soundtrack to my life. And so if you'll indulge me, I want to share a few short verses with you. May your struggles keep you near the cross. May your troubles show you that you need God. And may your battles end the way they should. And may your bad days prove that God is good. May your whole life prove that God is good. You see, graduates, these words are evergreen because they will never grow old. So, as you can already tell, this speech is meant to be an intimate occasion versus a public one. I came to speak to you in a very candid and personal way. Graduates, this is all about you. And so while I'm appreciative of the parents and support networks, I've come all the way from New York City to sit knee to knee through this podium with you. Let's think of this as a gigantic fireside chat. I want to tell you things that are both actionable and practical. I am so proud of you guys, and we fully need to honor this occasion with full-on bravado, regalia, and cheer. So, as we say in New York, much respect. Having spent time at the NC Wesleyan campus with day and adult learning students, I've come to appreciate all the dynamics that are at play that you've had to navigate to get you here on this graduation day. And working with my students, I recall hearing about demanding parents, stressful full and part-time jobs, long commutes, challenging bosses, depression, children to raise, spouses to love, English being a second language, financial issues, health problems, learning disabilities, and even death. And these are just to name a few. And for some, I know this to be true, literally your own facial splashes of toilet water. So today, you may be experiencing elation, pride, optimism, and confidence. And some of you may be experiencing fear and insecurity about what the future holds once you leave this cocoon that is NCWC. But I assure you, graduates, it's going to be okay. Why? Because you have the tools to be successful. And what I wish for you is that your whole life prove that God is good. So next, I'm going to share my story, well, more of my story, offer some insight into the world in which you are graduating, and then call, do a call to action. So on to my story. I'd love to impart some wisdom from my two graduation speeches, yes, two, as President Duff referenced, undergrad and grad. But wait, I didn't go to either of my graduations, so I can't do that. I didn't go to my first graduation from Cornell because, frankly, I couldn't afford to. I was so tired of being broke that as soon as classes ended, I was out of there. I packed up my little things 
and I went straight to work at Pepsi. Besides that, my brother Lamont graduated from Rensselaer Polytechnic Institute the week prior. So I was proud that my family could bask in the glow of our family's very first graduation. So let me say that again. It wasn't until the year of our Lord, 1993, that my family experienced our very first college graduation. And so with that, the generational curse of educational and financial pathology, my maternal grandmother had stayed on her knees praying about, had finally been broken. And let me tell you something, I am certain my ancestors celebrated in grand style. So forever keeping the accomplishment bar raised, Lamont made family history again and was the first to receive a graduate degree having earned an MBA from NYU. Inspired by him while working full time at American Express, I earned my graduate degree from Columbia. But by the time I graduated, I was working so hard and I was in such a demanding job that I chose not to go to that graduation either. I'm not suggesting that was right, but it was the choice I made at the time. Let me say that my brother Lamont is here. He's on this stage and he's currently He's currently an adjunct professor at Wesleyan. So I dare say that we've made Wesleyan history by being the first sibling professors the school has ever had. I'm really proud of this. So listen, despite all appearances, I did not come from wealth or privilege. You are not looking at a trust fund baby up here. But lesson one, it is not about how you start this race. It is about how you run and how you finish your race. And I need you to get that all up in your spirit. So like any book, your prologue or your introduction of your story, whether it's good or bad, it's just that. It's just the beginning. And typically, it's not something you can control. But there is a middle, and there is an end, and there is even an epilogue, which is something called your legacy. So where it matters is from the point you can control, and that's the middle. And I tip my hat off to you because the mere fact that you persevered, you worked hard, you studied, you sacrificed, and you earned the right to graduate tells me you're determined to write a good story, and I salute every one of you. So I grew up in very poor neighborhoods throughout Brooklyn, and by the time I was 11, we had moved the same number of times. You see, my prologue was meant to be written with pathology and lack. But instead, when I was able to take the reins of my own life, I decided, thanks to God, to change my narrative. I decided that my prologue gave me resilience. It gave me resourcefulness. It gave me adaptability, strength, and toughness. It taught me to become a prize fighter, and I overcame the setup. And what was that setup? It was low expectations for my life. So what did I do? I wiped and I worked. I vividly recall my brother Lamont wisely declaring his personal mantra, 
when he was about 20. And what he said to me was, sis, a setback is only a setup for a comeback. And that stayed with me and I am grateful. So ladies and gentlemen, graduates, I strongly encourage you to have your own personal mantra or what's referred to as your ethos. It means you need to have a well thought out personal belief that guides your life and is your true North Star. Your mantra is how you show up. Again, Lamont's was a setback is only a setup for a comeback. So let's unpack that. It means that failures are gonna come. This is life. It's how we grow, graduates. But you can't wallow in your failures and you cannot give up. Remember Constance Williams told you that, never ever give up. You wipe and you work. So use that failure to learn, apply those learnings, and come back even stronger. So I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. Vulnerability is very hard for me, most especially in this type of uh, setting in front of, well, just a handful of people. And while author Brene Brown asserts that vulnerability, quote, vulnerability, is the birthplace of love, belonging, joy, courage, empathy, and creativity, it is one of my biggest personal challenges. It's extremely hard for me for a couple of reasons. A, because I'm an introvert, shocking, right? I'm an introvert. B, I'm reserved, and C, I'm an intensely private person. Also, my role as a human resources executive teaches me to guard and manage my carefully crafted image and brand. But for you, Wesleyan graduates, because I'm so deeply invested in your success, I'm gonna make an exception and I'm going to go outside my comfort zone and I'm gonna tell you my story. What I wanna do now is share with you my personal setback, setup, and come back with a vengeance story in the hopes that you will learn from it. So that story is exactly what brought me here to Rocky Mount. You see, several years ago, I was totally burned out from corporate America because like I told you, I had been working continuously since I was 14 years old. I was killing it career-wise and had ascended the corporate ladder, having worked at various blue chips with which President Duff described earlier, American Express, Time Warner, et cetera. And I was like a heavyweight champion. I had earned coveted international assignments. I had led huge global teams, and all the while, I had earned not one but two Ivy League degrees. I was at the apex of my career as a senior vice president. And what happened? What the heck happened? Corporate America came for me. And it was cruel. And it was ugly. Candidly, my career ride had been so smooth that I was unprepared and I was unarmed for battle. I worked for a sociopath and I was eaten alive. The mean streets of Brooklyn and all the toughness I thought I had, it failed me in that situation. I was up against the ropes and I couldn't even throw one punch. The stress and drama, the stress and trauma I experienced at work began to affect my body. I suffered panic attacks, masking as heart attacks. I lost my crown, which is my hair. And I even had a bout with breast cancer. I was so broken, miserable, and I felt so defeated 
as in a TKO. And in keeping with my boxing metaphors, I love boxing. It's a total knockout. So that was my setback. I made the decision to leave the ring and I went packing. I made the decision to walk away from corporate America to leave the game and retire. So I sold my six bedroom house in New Jersey and I moved right here to Rocky Mount, which is where I had previously intended to retire, but like in my late 50s, 60s, 70s. But thankfully, I had already purchased and paid for a vacation slash retirement home several years prior. So in coming to Rocky Mount, it became my oasis. It became my sanctuary because I needed time to process, to heal, to exhale, and to learn the lessons that experience taught me and to regain my swag. So over time and with a clearer mind, I tapped into various passions and I developed a bucket list. And if you've been in my class before, you know I'm a big fan of creating bucket lists. So on this bucket list, it included entrepreneurship. I loved baking, so I opened up a cupcake shop at the Golden East Crossing Mall and later my own consulting firm. I flew in a helicopter, I started writing a novel, I learned how to professionally do makeup, I joined a social activism group here called the Rocky Mount Racial uh, Justice Group, I traveled, I picked up Italian, and I started saving for an RV. And guess what else I did? I became an adjunct professor at Wesleyan. Because you see, in kindergarten, you know, when they ask you, well, what's your what do you want to do when you grow up? For me, it was, I want to become a teacher. And so the opportunity to teach at this very fine institution was a dream come true for me and one I'm forever grateful for. And so with focus and prayer and being surrounded by my tribe, my mojo returned. I worked and I wiped. And I was restored and renewed. So when my friend and former colleague called me and invited me to come join her as the number two in HR at Sony Music, I was ready for my comeback in grand fashion. I returned to corporate America with a vengeance and I'm in, in a better position than when I left. So now my personal mantra is I am momentum. I am a force and I make stuff happen. That's how I show up. Now let's unpack that. It means I'm action oriented. I don't live a passive life. What I want for myself and those in my orbit, I work hard for and I do what I have to do to make it happen. No victim mentality here. And I'm allergic to inertia. I don't let life happen to me. I make my life happen. I'm constantly thinking, planning, doing, assessing, and praying. And because of my personal mantra, my life is an embarrassment of riches. And I am hashtag winning on my own terms. So Oprah's mantra is everything is always working for you. And we can all see this is how she shows up. Many would argue whatever she touches turns to gold. And so today, in true Oprah fashion, you get a mantra, you get a mantra, you get a mantra, we all get a mantra. The foundation of this, though, is from the Bible teaching that many of us are likely familiar with, and that is Romans 18, which teaches us in part, all things work together for our good. This means you are loved and automatically set up for success. 
So the things that happen to you, including the good and bad, are intended to make you better. Once you truly embrace this and seek to understand the lessons of the good and bad and apply them, I promise you there will be less stress and anxiety in your lives. So during that time that I helped my mother and family out by cleaning apartments and ultra luxury buildings, which to be clear, I hated, what I've come to realize is that was purposely designed for my good. And so I'm sure you're wondering, Professor Williams, Miss Williams, how can cleaning apartments possibly have been for your benefit? And I'll tell you why. I got to see how rich people lived. And I wanted that for myself. I grew hungry for it, and I fought like hell for it. Up close and personal, I was exposed to the finer things in life, from clothing and jewelry and artwork and furniture, even bedding to travel experiences through photos and mementos. I was given the gift of access. That living in the hood, I wouldn't have otherwise had. I became fiercely determined to have that kind of lifestyle. And I knew it was only through education, discipline, intellect, seeking God's favor, grit, and extremely hard work that I could have it. I could have it all, and so can you. They were certainly no better than me. So why couldn't I have it all? Why couldn't I have these things if I earned it? And you see, folks, I did. I seized every opportunity that was afforded to me to make good on the promise of success and excellence. So Oprah was right. Romans 8 and 28 was right. Everything was working out for me and my good. It still is. My life and yours is full of tailwinds that help propel us forward. I believe even this experience right here, right today, standing in front of you in this gigantic, moderately intimidating event center is working for our collective good. I see it and I hope you do too. So continuing with my story, though I'm not, entirely, though I'm not entirely sure how, I learned how to read by the time I was four and I escaped through the world of books. As a child, I loved books, I loved learning, and I loved school. You see, I had a big imagination, and I spent lots of time reimagining my life and how amazing it would be once I grew up. The mind is so powerful, graduates. We attract what we think. The laws of attraction are real. Positive attracts positive, and negative attracts negative. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. It is not some janky saying. So now I wanna share with you other worlds of pit, pearls of wisdom I've come across in my journey. Get yourself a ride or die tribe. Unapologetically and only surround yourself with people who get you and who want and believe the absolute best for you. In fact, your peeps should believe in your potential and your greatness even more than you do. For me, this includes a very limited set of individuals. Besides my parents and siblings, I have four besties. My brother Lamont, who is quite literally my protector my confidant, and my cut man. He literally believes I can do absolutely anything. Oh, the capers we have been through. Sonia, 
We go back 37 years and no one on this earth understands me better. She is like a phantom appendage. She's like that arm that you can't see. And she's the battery in my back. Daisha, we go back 16 years and by her exquisite example of beauty, grace, intellect, and excellence, she keeps me inspired to up my game. And finally, Miss Woody, who is not only my bestie, but she's my oracle. If you've seen the movie Matrix, you understand the role she plays in my life. She overflows with wisdom, and I'm constantly learning from her. She's like a walking Google. In addition to my parents, she and her husband, Mr. Milton, constantly petition God on my behalf, and they speak divine good fortune into my life. No one is more blessed than I am to have the parents, family, tribe of besties, and oracle I have. If you don't have a tribe, you need to get yourself one, just like that. Next piece of wisdom. Guard your ears, your eyes, your mouth, and your hands towards positivity. If it doesn't bring you joy or enhance your life, don't watch it, listen to it, speak on it, or do it. It's as simple as that. Anyone who knows me knows I am downright militant when it comes to protecting and guarding my peace. I encourage you to do the same. I don't watch things that upset me. I don't listen to things that upset me. I don't speak negatively. And I don't do things that impede my happiness. So next, operate with authenticity. Be your whole selves graduates and walk in your truth. I stopped wearing a mask. I put it down on 9-11. When on the sidewalk, I witnessed the tragedy of people locking arms and leaping to their deaths from the top of the World Trade Center. It was then that I realized that life was not only short, but it's delicate. And I decided I didn't want to be anywhere where the real me was not welcome or appreciated. Now there's a consequence to that. And the consequence is that I limit myself in that every place and every one is not for me. I'm not everybody's cup of tea and I'm not everybody's shade of blue. I own my fashion sensibility. I own my blackness and I'm very direct. I don't pay, thank you. I don't play corporate, institutional, or church politics. And so with that, there are some churches, organizations, and companies that I'm just not a good fit for. And I'm entirely at peace with that. I encourage you to as well. On a related note, have your own wow factor. Shine bright in whatever areas you feel special and proud in. Figure it out, own it, and master it. For me, it's that thing Miss Woody, my oracle, refers to as je ne sais quoi. It is that thing that when I walk into a room, I need not utter a word, which as an introvert, I'm probably not gonna do anyway. But people know I'm there and they pay attention. Because with or without my signature red bottom heels, that je ne sais quoi is presence, and I own it. So graduates, I've referenced it before, and I'll say it again because it's worth mentioning. Have an ongoing bucket list and keep checking it off. Bodacious experiences and accomplishments are part of a best life and I want you all to kill it. 
Let excellence be your standard. Your body of work, which you were just starting, should be anchored in excellence. If you let that be your guide, your body of work will surely speak for itself. And in this world of fake news, lies, and manipulation more than ever, you need to think independently and critically. Now I know, having spent time at Wesleyan, you are trained and equipped to do that. Can I get a head nod? Okay. So I want you to question, to research, and diligently fact check things before accepting them as truth. The world you're graduating into is complex and is full of hope and optimism because we live in a country where the American dream is possible, albeit somewhat flawed. It really is achievable. And yes, even by my own story, it's hard out there, but you have to remain optimistic and you have to believe that you can impact change, that it's up to you to give this world a better and brighter future. It is your duty to leave every place better than when you arrived. Despite its challenges, we live in a remarkable country where you don't have to be born into privilege to have a solid shot at success and a prosperous life. Your currency, your money, is your creativity, your work ethic, and your intellectual capital. So go for yours if that's what you aspire to. I want to not only encourage you to continue in your impressive journey, but I want each and every one of you to know that you have a responsibility. And while your diploma will help pave the way for success, it is your commitment to enacting your own greatness that will translate into success. Don't be a bystander. You have a social contract, we all do. There are so many critical issues out there, guys. Mine is social justice. Find a cause that moves you and fight for it. Help others, it's your duty. Pay kindness, civility, and generosity forward at every opportunity you get. Love up close and personal especially people who are different from you. In fact, what I'm asking you to do is seek out people who are different from you and connect authentically. Broaden your community because no matter what color you are, the color we all bleed is red. Be worthy. Even though this leg of your academic journey has ended, keep sharpening your mental sword. Keep reading, keep educating yourself, keep learning, and stay curious. Operate with courage, wisdom, and conviction. Have the courage to stand up for yourselves, have courage to stand up for others, and stand up for what's right. Don't compromise. Honor your values and live your virtue. Experience the world. There's a huge world out there waiting for you. It wants to see you. There's a world for you outside of Rocky Mount, outside of Eastern North Carolina, outside of the United States. Go see it. Go touch it. And finally, Work relentlessly hard, as I promise you, there are no shortcuts to success. And so, as I come to a close, know that when you wake up tomorrow, <laughs> your life is going to be different. No textbooks, no classes, and no professors. So I encourage you to write the book of your life and make sure it counts. How will you show up? 
How will you author your story? What is your mantra? Keep owning your story, wipe and work. And so I'd like to thank Dr. Duff for inviting me to speak today. I appreciate you and congratulations graduates and a heartfelt good luck. Thank you. Today, we would like to honor four young ladies with the honorary posthumous degree. These North Carolina Wesleyan students passed away on March 21st, 2016, in a car accident in front of the campus entrance. We would like to honor their families and award them their honorary posthumous degree at this time. Would a representative member of their family come and receive their degree when each name is red. Robin St. Clair Barnes. Robin was a freshman studying business administration. We would like to award her family with her honorary posthumous Bachelor of Science degree. Quadisha Danielle Brown. Danielle was a freshman studying exercise science. We would like to award her family with her honorary posthumous Bachelor of Science degree. She's a sweet girl, I knew it. Candace McBride Jones. Candace was a freshman studying biology. We would like to award her family with her honorary posthumous Bachelor of Science degree. God bless you, Thank you. Denisha D. Scott. D. was a freshman studying computer information systems. We would like to award her family with her honorary posthumous Bachelor of Science degree. We move now to the conferral of degrees. I want to offer a brief word of appreciation to our faculty and staff who brought each graduate to this place on this day. Would the candidates for the degree Master of Science please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Master of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Would the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Arts please stand? <laughs> On the recommendation of the faculty and by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees, of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Arts with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated. Would the candidates for the degree Bachelor of Science please stand? On the recommendation of the faculty, and by the virtue of the authority vested in me by the Board of Trustees of North Carolina Wesleyan College, I hereby confer upon you the degree Bachelor of Science with all the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Please be seated.
Brian James Baker. Shiana Lynn Cronin. Constantine Michelle De Jesus. Alpha Jermaine Herring. Yvonne W. Powell. Angela Kelly Richardson. Lauren Melissa Siegel. Rodney Smith. Joseph Stiles. Jemiah Baker. LaShonda Patrice Barnes. Elizabeth Grace Beckert. Barshawn Kamal Bennett. Alexander Logan Blackwell. Jasmine Ariel Bogle. Erica Jones Braswell. Jacqueline Brewer, summa cum laude. Carolina Mary Bodie. Brody. Brittany Arsonia Brunson. Allie Cadet. Christine Marie Calcaterra, transfer honors. Patrice Monet Carroll. Shanae D. Carson. Charlene Tachendria Carey. Tamika Talet Coley. Sean Michael Dancy, summa cum laude. Jenna Nicole Davis, magna cum laude. Leticia Rucole Dowd Williams. Antonio Dwayne Evans, magna cum laude. Can you open that? Panisha Faison, summa cum laude. Stephanie Raya Flores. Khadija Andrea Freeman. Kyle 
Andre Garrett. Nastasia Gray. Lakeisha Yvette Sharp Green. Rose Marie Griffin, summa cum laude. Sarah Renee Griffiths, magna cum laude. Jalicia Mungo Harris. Scott Hartley. Cum laude. Maddie Hernandez Sepot. Jaquez Malik Howington. Lakita Malarisa Hussan. LaVonda Ingram. Shatanya Chantel Johnson. Sierra Patrice Jones. Shannon L. King, cum laude. Margaret Irene Knight. Elizabeth Holland Crone, summa cum laude. Sydney Michelle Leggett. Carolyn Yvonne Lewis. Orlando Lamont. Makala, Sunakun Lottie, Lakeisha Tamara McKinnon, Caleb Williams Moo, Magna Cum Laude. Noah Lamar Mari. Tisha Tiambi Nicholson. Kelsey Elaine Peel, cum laude. Crystal Joyce Powell. Keandra, uh, Ke Lakendra, my apologies. Lakendra Ayana Renee Pyatt. Tarshall Adams Ravenel. Laurice Raya. 
Magna cum laude. Sullivan Cole Reese, summa cum laude. Sydney Smith. Imani Nia Stubbs, cum laude. Carlisa Michelle Sutton. Sandra Gail Taylor. Salia Marley Thomas. Magna cum laude. Lorenzo Whitehead, Jr. Camilla Larice Williams. Gregory Maurice Willingham, Sr. Ariel Capri Wilson, graduate of the Honors Program, summa cum laude. Sierra Michelle Yont. Lilia Abram, summa cum laude. Kelly Adair Amons, magnum cum laude. Dwight Artis, transfer honors. Uliana Bakhtivara, summa cum laude. Sean Tassini. Tatanesia Bender. Robert Carl Benson II, summa cum laude. Charles William Benton II, transfer honors. Matt Berry. Austin Lee Bourne. Jamar Ruffin Branch. Morgan McKinney Brum. Magna Cum Laude. Pamela S. Brewington. Katie Saunders Buchanan, summa cum laude. Darius. Darius Thomas Bird, magnum cum laude. Eric Alejandre Chavez. Katiar. Katiar. <laughs> Dwayne Laverne Clark. Beyond Sharice Cobb. Alicia Michelle Coley, 
Magnum Cum Laude. Taylor Lane Cornell. Cum Laude. Allison Sharon Cook, Cum Laude. Christopher Ray Cooper. Eric Anthony Copeland, Magna Cum Laude. Tina Louise Corpu Cum Laude. Takesha Lynette Daniel. Brittany Danae Davis, Tawan Muriel Merle Davis Sherard, Kim Lottie. Shaquana Leticia Deans. Diani Michelle Delva. Zeal Desai, Magna Cum Laude. Sharon Denise Dixon, Summa Cum Laude. Ashley Edwards. Julia Ann Evans, Summa Cum Laude. Malachi Farmer. Erica Serenity Franklin, summa cum laude. Casey Ann Frazier. Anna Y. Gallup, transfer honors. <laughs> because Gamiri. Geary Callie Green Tanya Marie Gilly transfer honors Sherry Lynn Hall Magna Cum Laude LaDonna Lisa Hart. Sharice Holly McAllister. Tevin J. Hedgepeth. Carlitha. Ulexi Holly. Joseph Evan Huff, summa cum laude. Lathan Earl Hyman Jr., magnum cum laude. Stephen Michael, I'm sorry, Stephen Michael Izzo, Magnum Cum Laude. Jacqueline Rogers Jackson. Kayada K. 
Johnson, magnum cum laude. Paris Johnson Bullock. Larmika Tivet Jones. Nathaniel Jones Jr., cum laude. Robert Sean Josie. Christopher Allen Kaiser, summa cum laude. <coughs> Megan Elizabeth Kite, cum laude. Peter J. Clagis, summa cum laude. Julia Lynn Legro, magna cum laude. Henry Atelia Lam Grijalba. Ruby Lama, magna cum laude. Reginald Lancaster. Laura Lawson, summa cum laude. Tyler John Letchworth. Emily Marie Lewis, summa cum laude. Alejandro Lopez. Martin Lopez. Summer Renee Love, magna cum laude. Melanie Ann Robertson Mager. Peter Owen Merritt, magna cum laude. Galen Marie Minchu. Lakeisha Williams Minor, transfer honors. Valerie Flysack Newton, magna cum laude. Shannon David Nichols. Nabia Noor, summa cum laude. Caleb Scott Norris. All John Norwood. Braxton Cole Oakey, cum laude. Violet W. Olson. Jeremy J. Parker Mincy, transfer honors. John Lawson Pate, Jr., magnum cum laude. Latrell Payton. David Bernard Peter Pepper Jr. Magnum Cum Laude. I'm good. Jeffrey Quamel Pearson Jr. Noah Simon Poon. Ava 
Ava Reynolds Porter. Porter. Nakia Amen Price, magna cum laude. Charlotte Virginia Parnell, cum laude. Precious Yvette Random. Anthony Joseph Ranieri, magna cum laude. Marianne Leticia Ratcliffe. Ezra Daniel Rivera. Glenda Lane Rogers, magna cum laude. John Madison Rosser, transfer honors. Teresa Ann Sanders. Abduli Sani. Laura Motter Seaver. Aisha Stressa, Magna Cum Laude. Naveen Singh, Kuma, Magna Cum Laude. Adrienne Marie Smith, Magna Cum Laude. Cindy Gail Smith, Summa Cum Laude. Tequila LaShonda Ellis Smith. Nicholas Pablo Stroff, Cum Laude. Nicole Strickland, Magna Cum Laude. Tyrell Lynn Summers, Magna Cum Laude. Michelle Marie Zabo. Dipsa Tombu. Tom Bacar. Nikita Themes, Cum Laude. Rico Rashad Thomas. Summa Cum Laude. Yvonne D. Vickers Jordan. Brianna Chantel Ward. Al James Wedgard Cum Laude. Alexis Wilcox, Magna Cum Laude. Ashley Corinne Williams. Daryl Williams. Madeline Claire Williams.
Krista Nicole Dejeuner Winston. Jasmine Lachey Woodard. Casey Marie Young, cum laude. She's going to bring you that one. Tanisha, Tanisha Star Williams. Let's give him one more round of applause. Thank you very much. Honorary degrees are conferred on individuals whose lives are characterized by remarkable achievements and sustained commitments to the values stated in North Carolina Wesleyan College's mission, namely preparing students for for professional advancement, lifelong learning, and responsible participation in their communities. There's a common thread of service to others among honorary degree recipients. Ms. Constant Williams certainly qualifies. Therefore, upon the recommendation of the Honorary Degree Committee and the approval of the Board of Trustees, it is my privilege to bestow upon Ms. Constant Williams the degree of Doctor of Honoris Causa with all of the rights and privileges pertaining thereto. Ms. Williams, please come forward. Before we present this degree, this was a surprise. So, so my two, uh, my presenter and um, Ms. Williams was not aware that this was happening. So before we present this degree, I want to share a very quick story Recently, when I visited Miss Williams in her Sony office in New York City, I learned that she had never walked across a graduation stage, and she shared that with you today. Even though she had prestigious degrees, she had not attended her graduation ceremonies. She explained to me that she was working, and because of her exceptional work ethic, that was the priority for her. With that said, I would like to now officially ask Constance Williams, Constance Williams to walk across our graduation stage to accept her Doctor of Fine Arts honorary degree. President Duff, faculty, board of trustees, and most importantly, our graduates and guests. My name is Samantha Rayner, and I'm a 2005 graduate of North Carolina Wesleyan College, and I'm currently the president of the Alumni Association. So I have the distinct honor of welcoming you to your Alumni Association today. And this is a bittersweet moment for me because this is the last time I'll address a December graduating class in this capacity. So even still, speaking with you today is really special to me because as a higher education professional myself, 
My job is to ensure the success of the undergraduate students on my campus. So I am energized when I am around successful students. And each of you represents Wesleyan's success story. Many of you came to Wesleyan as the first in your family to attend college. Some of you attended while working, and for many of you, that meant full time. Some of you had families, and others had family obligations. Some of you moved from another country just to study here. All of you had challenges and obstacles to, to overcome in order to make it to this moment. Coming from a poor family in Eastern North Carolina and being the first in my family to go to college, I understand some of those challenges. And having been in your shoes, I can assure you that the knowledge, the skills, the relationships, the friendships, and experiences you gained during your time at North Carolina Wesleyan have prepared you to launch or to relaunch your career. People say that we don't know what the jobs of the future look like and that a college education isn't the sure bet that it used to be. I say to you that that's not a problem because you have a liberal arts degree from North Carolina Wesleyan College. You have learned the most important skills necessary to be successful in the workforce of tomorrow, namely problem solving, how to discern and synthesize information, how to form arguments and analyze different perspectives. You've learned how to think critically, how to communicate effectively, how to work in teams, and how to engage in constructive debate while respecting the perspectives of those who differ from you. With these skills, you can adapt and transform your career to make any of the market demands of the future. Today, with the completion of your degree requirements, you join a community of over 15,000 Wesleyan alumni. And as you embark on your journey through life, remember that you will continue to be a part of the Wesleyan community, and it needs your engagement as well. Please let our alumni office know how to reach you and what you're up to. We want to be able to celebrate your accomplishments with you, and we want to be able to share Wesleyan's accomplishments with you as well so that you can celebrate with us. Completing your bachelor's degree is a remarkable accomplishment, and we, the North Carolina Wesleyan family, are proud of you. So you guys have been waiting for this moment all day. On behalf of the Wesleyan Alumni Association, it is my great honor and pleasure to welcome each of you as members of the North Carolina Wesleyan College Alumni Association. Please join me as we transfer our tassels from right to left. Welcome to your Alumni Association. If everyone will please stand as Ms. Letitia Scott, fellow alumna and member of the Alumni Association Board joins us again to sing the alumni.